Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. He's helped me to transform, to be transformed into the image of God, which is God's purpose for my life. I have the faith now to be able to stand through anything that I go through. I know that I'm going to come out victorious on the other side because of what I've learned through this ministry. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is my last day to be teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I just want to remind you that I'm giving this book away. My partners have enabled me to do this. Of course, it costs money for us to do this, and if you would like to give and be a part of it, we would welcome that, but we want you to have this truth. I've been talking about how necessary the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to the Christian life. AND THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT IS A SEPARATE EXPERIENCE FROM BEING BORN AGAIN. NOW, IT DOESN'T HAVE TO BE SEPARATED BY WEEKS OR MONTHS OR YEARS. IT COULD BE SEPARATED BY MINUTES, AS IT WAS IN ACTS CHAPTER 10 WITH CORNELIUS AND HIS FAMILY. BUT IT IS A SEPARATE EXPERIENCE. AND I GAVE EXAMPLES IN THE 8TH CHAPTER OF ACTS, THE 19TH CHAPTER OF ACTS, Uh, JOHN CHAPTER 20 AND OTHER PLACES WHERE THEY RECEIVED THE HOLY SPIRIT, BUT THEN THEY HAD TO RECEIVE THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT LATER. SO I'VE ALREADY DEALT WITH THOSE THINGS. YESTERDAY I WAS SHARING ABOUT SPECIFICALLY THE GIFT OF SPEAKING IN TONGUES. IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 14, VERSE 14, THE APOSTLE PAUL SAID THAT WHEN YOU PRAY IN AN UNKNOWN TONGUE, IT'S YOUR SPIRIT PRAYING. AND I WAS SHARING YESTERDAY THAT IT'S THE SPIRIT THAT GETS BORN AGAIN. WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN, IT'S NOT JUST SOMETHING THAT IS WRITTEN DOWN ON PAPER AND IT'S AN ACADEMIC THING AND IT DOESN'T BECOME A REALITY UNTIL YOU GO TO HEAVEN. NO, RIGHT NOW, ONE-THIRD OF YOUR SALVATION IS OVER. YOUR SPIRIT IS AS SAVED RIGHT THIS MINUTE AS IT WILL EVER BE IN ETERNITY. IT'S YOUR SOUL AND YOUR BODY THAT ARE GOING TO CHANGE WHEN WE GO TO BE WITH THE LORD. BUT RIGHT NOW, YOUR SPIRIT IS PERFECT, AND ACCORDING TO 1 CORINTHIANS 2.16, YOU HAVE THE MIND OF CHRIST IN YOUR SPIRIT. YOU HAVE AN UNCTION FROM THE HOLY ONE, AND YOU KNOW ALL THINGS. 1 JOHN CHAPTER 2, VERSE 20. 1 JOHN CHAPTER 4, VERSE 17, AS JESUS IS, SO ARE WE IN THIS WORLD. YOUR SPIRIT IS PERFECT. IT'S GOT THE MIND OF CHRIST, THE WISDOM OF CHRIST. COLOSSIANS 3.10 SAYS, PUT ON THE NEW MAN, WHICH IS RENEWED IN KNOWLEDGE AFTER THE IMAGE OF HIM THAT'S CREATED HIM. IN YOUR SPIRIT, YOU KNOW EVERYTHING. YOUR SPIRIT'S GOT EVERYTHING IN IT YOU WILL EVER NEED. THE REST OF THE CHRISTIAN LIFE IS RENEWING YOUR MIND AND DRAWING WHAT'S IN YOUR SPIRIT OUT. IT'S NOT ASKING GOD FOR MORE AND PRAYING MORE DOWN, BUT RATHER IT'S DRAWING OUT WHAT GOD PUT IN YOU AT SALVATION. AND THIS IS WHAT THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT AND THE GIFTS, THERE'S MANY OF THEM, BUT THE ONE I'VE BEEN FOCUSING ON YESTERDAY AND TODAY IS THE GIFT OF SPEAKING IN TONGUES. IT SAYS IN 1 CORINTHIANS 14, 14, THAT WHEN YOU SPEAK IN TONGUES, YOUR SPIRIT IS PRAYING. THIS PART OF YOU THAT HAS EVERYTHING, THAT HAS THE MIND OF CHRIST, YOU'RE SPEAKING IT RIGHT OUT OF YOUR MOUTH. MAN, THAT'S POWERFUL. IT'S JUST LIKE YOU'VE GOT THIS WELL. YOU KNOW, A PERSON COULD BE SITTING NEXT TO A WELL, AND THERE COULD BE LIFE-GIVING WATER JUST FEET FROM THEM, AND YET IF THEY DON'T HAVE ANY WAY TO GET THE WATER OUT OF THAT WELL, THEY COULD DIE OF THIRST LEANING UP AGAINST A WELL. SPEAKING IN TONGUES IS A WAY TO REACH DOWN INTO YOUR SPIRIT AND DRAW OUT THE LIFE, THE WISDOM, THE KNOWLEDGE, THE POWER THAT'S IN YOUR BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT. BOY, IT'S IMPORTANT. YOU NEED IT. AND PAUL SAID THAT THIS IS THE WAY THAT HE GOT HIS REVELATION. LOOK AT THIS IN in GALATIANS CHAPTER 1 AND IN VERSE 11 HE SAYS, BUT I CERTIFY YOU, BRETHREN, THAT THE GOSPEL WHICH WAS PREACHED OF ME IS NOT AFTER MAN, FOR I NEITHER RECEIVED IT OF MAN, NEITHER WAS I TAUGHT BUT BY THE REVELATION OF JESUS CHRIST. AND SO IF YOU STUDY OUT THE BOOK OF ACTS AND WHAT HE SAID HERE IN GALATIANS, YOU FIND THAT WHEN PAUL FIRST GOT BORN AGAIN, THE BELIEVERS WERE AFRAID OF HIM BECAUSE HE HAD BEEN PERSECUTING THE CHRISTIANS AND THEY WOULDN'T RECEIVE HIM AND HE HAD TO FLEE. AND ANYWAY, HE WENT INTO THE DESERT OF ARABIA FOR THREE YEARS. AND, OF COURSE, HE ALREADY HAD THE WORD IN HIM BECAUSE HE WAS A PHARISEE OF THE PHARISEES AND HE HAD STUDIED THE WORD. BUT IN THE DESERT OF ARABIA, 
GOD REARRANGED ALL HIS THEOLOGY AND SHOWED HIM THROUGH THE OLD TESTAMENT SCRIPTURES ABOUT WHAT THE CHRIST WOULD DO AND ABOUT HOW SALVATION WAS BY GRACE AND NOT BY LAW. AND HOW DID HE RECEIVE IT? HE SAID, I RECEIVED IT BY THE REVELATION OF GOD AND NOT FROM MAN. NOBODY TAUGHT HIM THESE THINGS. LET ME SHARE THIS VERSE WITH YOU OUT OF 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 2. PAUL WAS DEFENDING HIS APOSTLESHIP AND PEOPLE WERE CRITICIZING HIM. AND HE SAID IN VERSE 4, AND MY SPEECH AND MY PREACHING WAS NOT WITH ENTICING WORDS OF MAN'S WISDOM, BUT IN DEMONSTRATION OF THE SPIRIT AND OF POWER, THAT YOUR FACE SHOULD NOT STAND IN THE WISDOM OF MAN, BUT IN THE POWER OF GOD. HOWBEIT WE SPEAK WISDOM AMONG THEM THAT ARE PERFECT, YET NOT THE WISDOM OF THIS WORLD, NOR OF THE PRINCES OF THIS WORLD THAT COMETH TO naught. BUT WE SPEAK THE WISDOM OF GOD IN A MYSTERY, EVEN THE HIDDEN WISDOM, WHICH GOD ORDAINED BEFORE THE WORLD UNTO OUR GLORY. SO HE'S TALKING ABOUT WHAT WAS HE PREACHING? HE WAS PREACHING THIS REVELATION THAT CAME DIRECTLY FROM GOD, AND HE CALLED IT A MYSTERY AND THE HIDDEN WISDOM OF GOD IN A MYSTERY. NOW LOOK AT THIS SAME AUTHOR IN THE SAME BOOK. REMEMBER THAT MEN ARE THE ONES THAT PUT IN THE CHAPTER AND VERSE DIVISION. SO THIS IS THE SAME WRITING, AND IT'S IN THE SAME CONTEXT. AND LOOK AT WHAT HE SAID IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 14, and in verse 2, he says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm speaking the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom of God. So he says that that's how he learned his revelation, was through the hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. And he says that when you're speaking in tongues, that's what you're speaking. YOU KNOW, it, THERE'S PEOPLE THAT CRITICIZE SPEAKING IN TONGUES AND SAY IT'S JUST GIBBERISH. YOU AREN'T SAYING ANYTHING. IT DOESN'T EVEN SOUND LIKE A LANGUAGE. YOU KNOW, THERE ARE SOME LANGUAGES. I'VE BEEN ASSOCIATED WITH THE Wycliffe BIBLE TRANSLATORS TO SOME DEGREE, AND I KNOW THAT THERE ARE LANGUAGES OF KNOWN LANGUAGES THAT PEOPLE SPEAK ON THIS EARTH THAT ARE NOTHING BUT CLICKS OF THE TONGUE, LIKE THAT'S THE WAY THEY TALK. THERE'S OTHER LANGUAGES THAT ARE NOTHING BUT WHISTLES. AND I WAS READING ABOUT HOW THESE BIBLE TRANSLATORS, HOW DO YOU TRANSLATE WRITTEN WORDS INTO CLICKS OF THE TONGUE AND WHISTLES? AND YET THESE ARE KNOWN LANGUAGES. NOW SOMEBODY MIGHT THINK THAT THAT'S SILLY TO SAY THAT YOU'RE SPEAKING IN A LANGUAGE. THAT DOESN'T SOUND LIKE A LANGUAGE TO ME. WELL, DOES CLICKING YOUR TONGUE OR WHISTLING SOUND LIKE A LANGUAGE AND YET THEY ARE LANGUAGES? I'M TELLING YOU, SOME PEOPLE JUST THINK THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER THIS HAS TO SOUND LIKE SOMETHING AMAZING, YOU KNOW, COMING OUT, SOPHISTICATED. NO, IT'S NOT LIKE THAT. AND ALSO, WHEN YOU FIRST SPEAK IN TONGUES, SOMETIMES PEOPLE ARE SO SELF-CONSCIOUS AND SO FULL OF DOUBT ABOUT, IS THIS REALLY GOD OR IS IT JUST ME, THAT THEY DON'T, THEY AREN'T FLUENT. IT'S SIMILAR TO A PERSON WHEN THEY FIRST START SPEAKING. YOU DON'T SPEAK INTELLIGENTLY. WHEN A LITTLE BABY GOES, DA, DA, YOU KNOW, OTHER PEOPLE MAY SAY, THEY DIDN'T SAY DADDY, BUT THAT DADDY KNOWS WHAT THEY WERE TRYING TO SAY. IT MAY NOT HAVE COME ACROSS PROPERLY, BUT DON'T YOU DARE TELL THAT DADDY THAT THAT CHILD DIDN'T SAY DADDY. AND IT'S THE SAME THING WITH OUR HEAVENLY FATHER. YOU MIGHT NOT BE FLUENT SPEAKING IN TONGUES BECAUSE OF FEAR OR WORRY OR SELF-CONSCIOUSNESS OR WHATEVER, BUT MAN, YOUR FATHER IS LISTENING TO YOUR HEART. AND ACCORDING TO PAUL, WHEN YOU ARE SPEAKING IN TONGUES, YOU'RE SPEAKING WISDOM. SO HOW DO YOU GET, HOW DO YOU GET THAT TO BENEFIT YOU? 1 CORINTHIANS 14, 13, IF YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, PRAY ALSO THAT YOU MAY INTERPRET. AND I BELIEVE, YES, PAUL STUDIED THE WORD and, AND THINGS LIKE THIS, BUT HE DID NOT GO TO SCHOOL. HE WAS NOT TAUGHT THE GOSPEL IN SCHOOL. NO MAN TAUGHT HIM. HE GOT IT BY DIVINE REVELATION. AND PART OF THAT, AT LEAST PART OF IT, WAS HIM PRAYING IN TONGUES, BECAUSE WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, YOU'RE SPEAKING THE HIDDEN WISDOM OF GOD IN A MYSTERY, AND HE PRAYED AND ASKED FOR AN INTERPRETATION. AND THIS IS HOW GOD BEGAN TO GIVE HIM SUPERNATURAL REVELATION, SO MUCH SO THAT EVEN THE APOSTLE PETER, WHO SAT UNDER THE MINISTRY OF JESUS FOR THREE AND A HALF YEARS, SAID OVER IN uh, SECOND PETER, HE SAYS, OUR BELOVED BROTHER PAUL SAYS SOME THINGS THAT ARE HARD TO BE UNDERSTOOD. EVEN PETER STRUGGLED WITH SOME OF THE THINGS THAT PAUL SAID BECAUSE PAUL JUST HAD PRAYED IN TONGUES, AND I'M SURE THERE WAS OTHER THINGS, BUT THAT WAS A PART OF IT, AND HE HAD A DIVINE, SUPERNATURAL REVELATION FROM GOD. SO, PRAYING IN TONGUES, 
allows you to communicate without the fear, without the doubt that's in your mind, without the lack of understanding that's in your mind. It allows you to communicate with God spirit to spirit, and you have the privilege of praying that you interpret. Let me give you an example of this, that when I was down in Colorado Springs, this has been back, it, it would have been about 2000 and... Um, Three, I believe it was, 2003. I was down there and I had bought a building for $3.2 million and we went into debt and bought that building on credit. But then we had a $3.2 million renovation that had to be done on the building before we could occupy it. And when I bought the building, they told me that they would give me the construction loan within a week or so. And anyway, this went on for nine months and they didn't give us the construction loan. So here we were with this new building that we were making payments on and I couldn't even occupy it because we couldn't renovate it. They hadn't given me the construction loan. And I mean, I met with them every week for nine months. And finally, after nine months, the, the people just said, you know, it's been so long. Let's start the whole process over and let's get a new appraisal and go through this again. And all I could see was another nine months. And our Bible college had totally outgrown the facility we were in at the time. We needed this new facility. It was choking the ministry and things just weren't working. And I said, look, you let me pray about this. I should have prayed about it in the first place, but I just was going this natural route. They guaranteed me I'd get my construction loan. And so I was going that route. And so anyway, I left that day and I went home and I've built a trail on my property where I walk. It's about a two and a half mile round trip. And I pray and I started down this trail and I took these scriptures and I said, Father, I need wisdom. And I believe that in my spirit, I have the mind of Christ. First Corinthians 2, 16. Colossians 3, 10. I have been renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created me. That's not up here in my brain, it's in my spirit. First John 2, 20 that I have an unction from the Holy One and I know all things. And I said, I know that in my spirit, I have an answer for this, but I need to get that answer out into my brain. What do I need to do to get this money released so that I could finish out this building? And so I started down this trail and I said, I'm gonna pray in tongues and believe that I interpret it. And I started down this trail and I wasn't more than maybe a hundred yards, not very far, down this trail, praying in tongues and asking for an interpretation. And all of a sudden, a prophecy that I had gotten two years before, a man came up to me and I'd been talking about how God told me to take the limits off of him and to start thinking bigger. And this man came up and gave me a prophecy and says, you aren't gonna need to borrow any money to accomplish this because you have a bank. And when he said that, I remember thinking, what bank do I have? And he says, your partners are your bank. They will supply you with all of the money that you need. And when he said that, I rejoiced in it, but that had been two years before and in the process of everything, I had forgotten it and I had taken out a loan to buy the building and I was planning on getting this construction loan to do the $3.2 million renovation and I hadn't even thought of that prophecy. I hadn't thought about it. I just was going this natural route the way everybody else does, go borrow the money and then make payments. And as I was praying and asking for wisdom and praying in tongues and saying, give me an interpretation, this prophecy came back to me that I hadn't thought of in two years. And I'm, I literally just stopped right there. And I said, is this what the problem is? I'm not supposed to take out a construction loan. I'm supposed to pay for this cash. And I began to start praying and saying, God, is this the answer? And it was a big decision because at that time to save up $3.2 million cash and not take out a loan, it would have taken, I would have been over 120 years old at the rate we had been able to save money. And of course that would have killed the ministry and possibly I wouldn't have been around by that time. And so it was a big decision, but I prayed about it and sought the Lord. And the more I prayed about it, the more I felt like this was God. And anyway, I made a decision not to take out the construction loan. I went in and told my manager of my ministry, I said, if they come through tomorrow and tell me they'll give me all of that $3.2 million, I'm not taking it. I'm going to do it debt free. 
And sure enough, the next day they came out and said, all right, we're ready. We're going to give you $4 million. And I said, you're too late. I turned it down. And did you know in 14 months, we had that $3.2 million and finished that building and moved into it. And you know how I got that? It was by praying in tongues and asking God for an interpretation. And I know there may be some people who are sitting there saying, well, that was coincidence. That did... Well, look at the fruit of it. Look what happened. Man, we were able to finish that building and have $3.2 million worth of building done debt-free. Man, it improved my financial situation. And I've been operating on that since. And in the last six and a half years, I've built over $75 million worth of buildings debt-free. And that's on top of my normal operating expense. I'm telling you the fruit of this. This was God speaking to me. And the way I did it was by praying in tongues. If I didn't have the ability to pray in tongues and release the wisdom and the mind of Christ that was placed in me in salvation and then ask for an interpretation, there's a lot of things in my life that would be different. I mean, God has spoken to me hundreds, thousands of times through me believing that in my spirit I have the mind of Christ, that when I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying, and that I can ask for an interpretation. And I have done this not only asking for direction, but when I come to scriptures and I just can't seem to understand it for some reason, it doesn't seem to be communicating to me, I'll pray in tongues. And I'll believe that I've got the mind of Christ and ask God to give me wisdom. And I have had scriptures just all of a sudden, it looks like, in neon lights, God just shows me, here's what this means. And He unlocks it and shows me things. I know that there's people that are sitting there saying, well, you know, that's your opinion. Well, I'm saying it from Scripture. And if you don't want to believe it, I can't make you believe it. But for those of you who will receive it, I'm telling you that receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which includes many things, but it includes speaking in tongues, is one of the most important things you'll ever do. And so let me just share some other things with you. This is my last day to minister on this, and I know that there's still a lot of questions. That's the reason I'm encouraging you to get this book. I'll give it to you absolutely free, and it'll answer all of this in more detail. But let me just answer some things. That When I first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I didn't speak in tongues immediately. Now, there will be some people who believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, and they will now be upset with me because I don't believe that you have to speak in tongues immediately because they believe that that is the sign that you've received the Holy Spirit. I believe it is a sign that you've received the Holy Spirit, and I am definitely promoting speaking in tongues. But I believe you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit and not speak in tongues. I'm not baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I'm not speaking in tongues right now. I'm speaking in a known language. I'm not going to speak in tongues because the Bible says that when you're communicating to other people, it has to be done in a way that they can understand. <clears throat> so I'm not going to speak in tongues over my telephone, I mean, over my television program, but I guarantee you I could speak in tongues. But when I first received it, I didn't speak in tongues immediately, and that's because I was a Baptist. I had been told that this was of the devil, and I was fearful of it. And even after I believed that it was from God and I was trying to receive it, I still had the fear and the criticism and the things that were spoken against it that were hindering me. And here's one of the major things that stopped me from speaking in tongues immediately, and that was that I wanted it to be so much Holy Spirit. I wanted it to be pure Holy Spirit speaking through me that I was afraid it might be me talking. And so I would just pray and ask for God to give me the gift of speaking in tongues, and then I'd just open my mouth and wait on Him to make me talk. That's not the way it comes. It says in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, when they received the Holy Spirit, it says, "...they spake with tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them the utterance." The Holy Spirit does not speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit does not force you to speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit inspires speaking in tongues, and you have to cooperate, and it's you talking. It's not just you talking. It's not you making up words, but it is you talking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. 
AND SO FOR A LONG PERIOD OF TIME, I WOULD PRAY AND ASK GOD TO HELP ME SPEAK IN TONGUES, BUT I WOULD WAIT ON HIM TO MAKE ME DO IT. AND THAT VERSE IN ACTS 2, 4, WHERE IT SAYS, THEY SPAKE WITH TONGUES AS THE SPIRIT GAVE THEM THE UTTERANCE JUST SET ME FREE. I CAME TO REALIZE THAT IT'S JUST LIKE WHEN I'M UP MINISTERING. IT'S ME TALKING. THAT'S THE REASON IT COMES OUT IN TEXAN. THAT'S THE REASON IT COMES OUT WITH MY SENSE OF HUMOR. IT'S ME THAT'S TALKING. BUT I REALLY DO BELIEVE THAT GOD IS INSPIRING IT. AND I BELIEVE THAT. I'VE SEEN PEOPLE HEALED. I'VE SEEN PEOPLE SAVED. I'VE SEEN PEOPLE BORN AGAIN. I'VE SEEN LIVES CHANGED. I BELIEVE THAT IT'S GOD WHO INSPIRES ME, BUT HE DOESN'T FORCE ME TO SPEAK. IF I WAS TO PRAY AND SAY, OH, GOD, I'M GOING TO MAKE A TELEVISION PROGRAM TODAY. PLEASE SPEAK THROUGH ME. AND THEN I JUST OPENED UP MY MOUTH AND WAITED ON GOD TO MAKE ME TALK SUPERNATURALLY, THEN THERE WOULDN'T HAVE BEEN A WORD SAID ON THIS TELEVISION PROGRAM. GOD DID NOT FORCE ME TO SAY WHAT I SAID. IT WAS ME SPEAKING, BUT IT WASN'T ONLY ME SPEAKING. IT'S ME SPEAKING UNDER THE INSPIRATION OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. SPEAKING IN TONGUES IS LIKE THAT. YOU CAN'T JUST ASK AND SAY, WELL, IF GOD WANTS ME TO SPEAK IN TONGUES, I WILL. THAT DOESN'T WORK ANY MORE THAN IF I WAS TO SAY, GOD, IF YOU WANT ME TO MAKE A TELEVISION PROGRAM, THEN YOU WILL JUST TAKE MY MOUTH AND MAKE IT TALK. NO, I HAVE TO SPEAK, BUT I DRAW ON THE HOLY SPIRIT AND BELIEVE THAT HE'S INSPIRING WHAT I'M SAYING. YOU HAVE TO SPEAK. YOU HAVE TO START MAKING SOUNDS. AND THIS IS ONE OF THE REASONS THAT IT SAYS IN um, JUDE CHAPTER 1, VERSE 20, IT SAYS, BUT YOU, BELOVED, BUILDING UP YOURSELVES ON YOUR MOST HOLY FAITH, PRAYING IN THE HOLY GHOST. KEEP YOURSELVES IN THE LOVE OF GOD. WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, YOU ARE PRAYING, YOU'RE BUILDING UP YOURSELF ON YOUR MOST HOLY FAITH. IT IS A HIGH LEVEL OF FAITH. YOU KNOW, ONE OF THE REASONS THAT IT IS A HIGH LEVEL OF FAITH IS BECAUSE IT IS A STEP OF FAITH EVERY TIME YOU DO IT. YOU ARE TALKING, BUT YOU BELIEVE THAT IT'S GOD INSPIRING IT. AND I GUARANTEE YOU, YOUR NATURAL MIND WILL THINK, YOU DON'T KNOW WHAT YOU'RE SAYING. THIS DOESN'T MAKE SENSE. AND FOR YOU TO CONTINUE TO SPEAK IN TONGUES, NOT JUST SPEAK IN TONGUES FOR ONE PHRASE OR ONE SENTENCE, BUT IF YOU SPEAK IN TONGUES FOR 10 MINUTES, 20 MINUTES, AN HOUR, YOU HAVE TO GET INTO FAITH. YOU HAVE TO PUT YOUR MIND UPON GOD. YOU HAVE TO TAKE YOUR MIND OFF OF ALL OF THE JUNK THAT THE DEVIL'S TELLING YOU, AND YOU CANNOT CONTINUE TO PRAY IN TONGUES WITHOUT KEEPING YOUR MIND STAYED UPON GOD. SO THAT'S ONE OF THE REASONS THAT SPEAKING IN TONGUES IS SUCH A POWERFUL THING IS BECAUSE IT FORCES YOU TO CONCENTRATE ON GOD. IT FORCES YOU INTO YOUR MOST HOLY FAITH, AND YOU ARE PRAYING IN TONGUES BY FAITH. MAN, THERE IS SO MUCH MORE THAN WHAT I'VE BEEN ABLE TO SHARE IN THIS WEEK. I'VE GOT IT IN THIS BOOK. WE'VE ALSO GOT A STUDY GUIDE. I'VE GOT DVDs AND CDs. BUT I WOULD LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET THIS. THIS IS MY GIFT TO YOU. TODAY'S MY LAST DAY TO OFFER IT. BUT I WOULD LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO CALL OR WRITE US AND GET THIS BOOK. AND AS YOU CONTACT MY PRAYER MINISTERS, PLEASE ASK THEM TO PRAY WITH YOU AND HELP YOU TO RECEIVE THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. WE HAVE SEEN TENS OF THOUSANDS OF PEOPLE RECEIVE THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT OVER THE PHONES AS OUR PRAYER MINISTERS PRAYED WITH THEM. AND I KNOW THAT GOD HAS TOUCHED MANY OF YOU TODAY, AND YOU SAY, MAN, I NEED THAT. I NEED THOSE THINGS THAT YOU'RE TALKING ABOUT. I HAVEN'T HEARD OF THIS BEFORE, AND YOU NEED THIS. WE WOULD LOVE TO PRAY WITH YOU, AND IT'S NOT HARD. GOD WANTS YOU TO HAVE THE HOLY SPIRIT MORE THAN YOU WANT TO HAVE THE HOLY SPIRIT. I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THAT but he won't force himself upon you. You have to open up your heart and invite this in. He's a gentleman. So if you would like to receive this book, please call and at the same time, ask them to pray with you and help you to receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit. I guarantee you, it will transform your life. Today's my last day to make this a free offer to you. Please listen to our announcer as he gives you the information and call or write today. You can get Andrew's book titled, The New You and the Holy Spirit in either English or Spanish today, absolutely free as a special offer when you call our helpline at 719-635-1111. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia while supplies last. Contact us today to receive this free offer. Today's series is an abbreviated version of Andrew's teaching titled, The New You and the Holy Spirit. 
This teaching in its entirety is available on a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Both were made from the original five-week broadcast. This teaching is also available in a companion study guide. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. You can also get these products in the New You and the Holy Spirit package, which includes the book, study guide, and your choice of either the CD or DVD album. This package has a catalog value of $75, but you can get it today for a gift of $50 or more. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of May, come to Karis Bible College in Woodland Park for the Kingdom Foundations Conference with speakers Andrew Womack, Randy Clark, and Pastor Bill Johnson. Next, Andrew will be hosting our annual UK Grace and Faith Conference and our Russia Grace and Faith Conference, both via live stream from Colorado. Pastor Dwayne Sheriff will be a guest speaker at these events. The Woodland Park campus will be open for guests. However, for our friends and partners in the UK and Russia, while you're not able to attend in person, there will be a live stream link available. Visit our website for more information about this special live stream event. In June, Andrew will be hosting live stream events to Germany and then to South Africa. Next, come to Woodland Park for the Kingdom Business Summit. Speakers at this event include John C. Maxwell, Billy Epperhard, Karen Conrad, Paul Milligan, and Dr. Dean Radke. Please note, Andrew will not be speaking at this event. Next, Andrew will be in Woodland Park for the Stand Courageous event with guest speaker General Jerry Boykin. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. You know, the Lord has given me a huge vision, and we've been blessed up to this point, but I've still got so much that God's leading me to do. I'm believing God for 10,000 new partners. We've already got over $120 million worth of buildings in just the last nine years. But I've got at least a hundred million dollars worth, maybe two hundred million dollars worth of buildings still in my heart for our students, for an activity center. We've got a new student housing that we've got a preliminary drawing of that is showing you a little idea of what it would look like. This one would house about 120 people. Our others are going to be smaller with maybe somewhere around 40 people per dorm. But we need this student housing and we need people to become partners. I'm believing for 10,000 new partners. I would ask you to pray about it, and if the Lord says so, join with us and help us change people's lives through Karis Bible College.